Good morning, everyone. Whew, that's loud. Have happy, wonderful, sunny, beautiful Easter morning. Let's everybody stand and let's do our welcome song. Resurrection Day, changing from the man, Jesus, to the Spirit, Christ, and all of us. And we are all part of that and celebrate that in ourselves and in each other. Uh, we are a unity congregation. That means we work under the five basic principles of unity teaching in Summit Lee, Missouri. And as we start our service here, we have a statement of faith that we uh, all live by. And that is, please join me, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the good omnipotence. And our affirmation for today, thank you God, that we have come to this place to release the past, celebrate the present, and embrace the future in love, peace, harmony, and prosperity. And that's not just for today, that's for every day. And as a congregation, we stand together um, as a community, reaching to ourselves, our family, our friends, and out in the community in general, and stand by this affirmation as well. We at the Unity Center are a diverse, inclusive, spiritual community who come together to demonstrate and live uh, teachings of Jesus Christ by listening, learning and empowering ourselves and others. And part of our work involves prayer, affirmative prayer that is. Um, so when we pray, we pray for the desired outcome, not for what is happening that we don't want. That comes with denials and affirmations. 
And so we would ask if uh, you decide, if you need some prayer today, actually there's a couple of ways you can do that. We do the prayer here on the chaplain afterwards. If you'd like individual prayer, we have a prayer box. If you'd like to keep that, um, pray, we pray over that for 30 days on the Thursday morning prayer service. And then we send it to Unity Village for another 30 days. So you got lots of prayer on that. Um, but in the meantime, for the service, if you have prayer requests, just give the first name and the desired outcome, please anyone who might have some prayers. Joanne. Ken for healing. Yes. Agnes for healing from a car accident. Healing and wholeness. Sandy. Rosa and Norma for healing. Genie success with trial medicine. Yes. All of her strength. Very good. If I don't see you, uh, yes. Then acceptance of a new home. Okay. Yes. And there's a whole bunch of other ones. The Sikhs are doing, I have them. Um, the uh, Baha'is have one right now. I've got it on my phone. Let me pull it up for later. All these communities are celebrating together. It's an amazing poem. Beth was saying that, you know, she loves the cr tradition where the Christians are doing Easter and the Jewish Passover and Muslims Ramadan. So we've got all those joyous celebrations together. Anything else? I want to tell all of our leaders to the highest good in their own hearts. This leaders in their highest good and listen especially after the elections this this past week and the changeover of things anyone else okay i put my dad back on there with jim and i think somebody else asked um I think her name was Jenny. Someone else asked during the week for prayers. Okay. Uh, we breathe in the spirit of healing, wholeness, and wonder. We take in all of these prayers that we have voiced and extend our hearts and hands to the God who knows all and to ourselves because we are the energy that makes all of this happen. When Jesus was on this earth, he said, all this I do and so can you. So as we extend our energy, we can make and create the healing environment for those that we request, including Jim and Ken, Agnes, Jeannie, who the other ones are here. 
We know also that Jeannie is trying a new medication, that there is success with that, that the doctors give the wisdom that they need in helping her transition into that or find something better. We agree and affirm that Paula has the strength that she needs and that Lynn will accept the new home. We know that Agnes may be feeling some energy that is not in her normal keeping from the car accident and that she will be whole, healthy, mentally, spiritually, physically. We thank you for the elections that we had in this state this past week. And we know that those leaders will work together the greater and highest good of all that they will work together, that they will listen, that they will be a part of building a better state, community, locally, and nationally in all that they do. We thank you for this great, awesome celebration that we can all celebrate together, no matter what our spiritual beliefs are in the moment. Our Jewish friends, Ramadans, for the Muslims, Passover for the Jewish, Easter for the Christians, Baha'i, the Sikh, everyone who celebrates a special day today. And you know what? Just because we are here and existing, we know that we have a special day to celebrate, to be alive. We thank you for all of this, knowing that it is true and it is so through the name and the nature of Jesus the Christ. Amen. And so it is. And I don't see Denise this morning. I just presumed. Is there someone who would like to read the daily word? All right, come on up, Miss Ida. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Easter. I am resurrected through the power of the Christ. On this glorious Easter day, I am resurrected and brimming with new life. The stones of defeat and limitation have rolled away. I am free and unlimited. Throughout my Lenten journey, I heeded the call from my soul to recognize the stones in my consciousness and awaken to the infinite potential within me. I can now rejoice in the shimmering light of awareness with an open, joyful heart. My faith is strong and I am ablaze with the radiance of spirit. I welcome eternal indwelling life into my mind and heart. Hope never dies. Jesus transcended death and demonstrated life is eternal. With a grateful heart, I rise up and claim new life. I am resurrected through the indwelling Christ. It's a new dawn, a new day, a new beginning. I have risen. John eleven twenty five. 25, I am the resurrection and the life. And so it is. Thank you. And I should hand this to Sherry to read because she's all the, I can't even pronounce half the celebrations that are going to be here. So <laughs> we'll, we'll let that go. I'll share it up on Facebook or something with the rest of the community later. And today we welcome Sherry Hansen for our music. Happy Easter, everyone. So good to be here with you.
<laughs> I love that song and it talks about all of the you know the spiritual the skin color the beliefs the whatever we've got right now going on bringing all together perfect song Sherry thank you and for our message this morning we welcome Susan Larkin on resurrections and guess what <laughs> new life i wonder why <laughs> come on susan <laughs> okay hmm. it's magic just magic ah. Ah. I am a daughter of God on this earth, and I know my father, and that's what I'm worth, and he's good, so good to me. Jesus knew his father like no one had ever shown us to know their father. Called his father Papa. He loved his father. And in all the old ways of describing a relationship at its best for the early days was to say, He's my father, and I'm here because he sent me, and I will do my father's business. And that was how it all began. But then so much happened. And why I titled this talk Resurrections is that we're used to just hearing resurrection, all caps, with the word the in front of it. But Jesus said, like Cindy referred to, he said, you can do all these things I've done. 
and more. And in my mind, I've also always gone, well, <laughs> except that resurrection part. <laughs> but no, I think we do all that Jesus did. We might do it differently. Like Kevin has told us before that when he was a little boy, he tried to make a rabbit come back to life or a little puppy. It didn't work. But what I think is that let's just say we know someone in our lives who is thinking of ending their life. Let's say that we say something or we do something. And for one reason or another, that person decides not to end their life. I think then we may have brought them back to life. And then there's the part where he caused the blind to see. Well, sometimes when people don't understand something and we call on our highest self, we might be able to say something to help them see something that they couldn't see before. So the man who couldn't hear, the person who couldn't speak, sometimes there are people who are afraid to say what they know inside they want to say. And sometimes we can help give that person voice. Maybe we introduce them to song or poetry or speaking or dance, and they have what they say found their voice. To me, that is doing exactly what Jesus did. But in our way, in our language, in our time, I think that we all come through resurrections all the time. We get dark. We go down a rabbit hole. We get depressed. We get afraid. We get nervous. We get rude. We get unkind. We get angry. We go into isolation because I don't want anybody to see me anymore. Not after I did that. So we hide. And then we use our tools. We pray. We read sacred books. We meditate. Maybe we journal. And after a time, we're okay. We're okay. And we come back and we're different. During my Lent, I went away for three weeks. I would experienced three things in my life that just broke me down. A dear friend's beautiful little dog that I've loved my whole life, my whole life, the dog's whole life, got mauled by a pit bull to the point of almost death. And then within that time, my grandson was at a batting cage and inadvertently a wild freakish accident happened and a baseball ricocheted off a beam from behind him and hit him and broke his jaw. And the same way when I heard about that little dog, I just broke down and cried right there. I just bawled hard bawling, just loud, oh my God. And then someone I loved had a massive stroke and died the same day. <laughs> Those three things were enough to just crack me inside. And so I got in my car like I do, and I found a place to be. And now I'm okay. And that's what miracle stories are all about. Like the Course in Miracles just says, 
the miracle is to change your mind, to see things differently. And if I am a daughter of God on this earth, and if I know my father, and that's what I'm worth, then I need to know that I am loved and I am protected and I am taken care of. And I will resurrect because God always moves us forward. Always, always, always. We do not come from a God that says, well, you're in kind of a mess. Good luck with that. That is not who created us. That seed of hope and love and faith is alive in there. It will never be gone. Never, never, never. And Jesus knew that. I've been studying a bit about the crucifixion and the resurrection. As a positive, happy-go-lucky character, I've always said to people, well, I'm really into the resurrection. You know, you spend too much time with this crucifixion talk. And my daughter-in-law, when she first met me, she wouldn't have that. <laughs> she said, Susan, you have to have the crucifixion to have the resurrection. I'm like, yeah, well, you fundamentalist, sure. Now, big girl, <laughs> growing up a little bit. So I'm studying this crucifixion resurrection thing now. And in Hebrews, it says that, whoops, there's my costuming. Um, it says that after the resurrection, at, no, no, after he died, after the crucifixion, there was this veil that was torn in half from the top to the bottom. I believe they say the veil was rent. And in that language i think it means it was torn and that doesn't get much attention but then i studied a little deeper and it turns out that this veil opening was the way for us to connect to the kingdom of heaven within before that it was just the high priests who could connect to god and they lorded that over all the people. They said, you need to come to us if you want to know God. You come to our church. We'll give us some money. We'll, we'll tell you about God. It turns out that when he died, that was what they mean by he gave his blood. His blood transfers to the opening of that veil. Then from that point on, all the people had access to the kingdom of heaven within. We take it for granted. I've always known the kingdom of heaven was within. I can talk to God. I don't need some priest telling me what to do. But no, that was a new thing. And Jesus did that. I always thought when we said Jesus is the light and the way, he showed us the way by healing, by good love, by all that. He made the way so that I can count on the fact that if I go to my journal or if I go to my knees or if I go to my meditation, God is there. I can count on the fact that God is right here, right now, in everybody, in the flowers, in the bunnies, in the, God is real. And maybe before that veil was, you know, torn, maybe people thought God was over there and they were over here. It's like when we have our reincarnational experiences, if you follow that line of thinking, they say there's a veil of forgetting that happens when we, our soul takes on a new body and we forget all the lives we've lived before so that we can focus and do this life so the veil was there on purpose. Maybe they're the same veil. I don't know. Maybe mixed metaphors. But it blew me away to think that by him dying, he actually 
opened up the way for us to really be with God right here, right now. I thought that was pretty neat. So I think we have resurrections every day. And we can honor that. And we can tell those stories like they matter. Now, let's see, what was my talk? I have been studying spiritual discernment for months before any of this other stuff happened. And I wanted to share you, share you, share, share with you what I now understand about discernment. How do I know God's will? How do I figure out what I'm supposed to do? I have access. That's very nice. But I'm also all over the map being a human. So I made these handouts because I didn't want anybody to have to take notes. I've been listening to a man named Father Timothy Gallagher talk about St. Ignatius and his rules for spiritual discernment. He lived in about 400. And people have been practicing these things. I don't know. Do the math. Long time. And they work. In the Catholic tradition, which is where all the saints, and the language about the saints originates, in order to be interested in spiritual discernment, you have to want to be about God and not about other stuff. So the first part of this handout says, once we are sincere about moving toward thoughts of God within our own being, instead of away from thoughts of God, we've got to get better at discerning the thoughts that are in our mind. We know that. But how do I get on track when I'm off? When I'm acting like a, hmm. when I, I can't pray, I don't want to meditate. Interesting affirmation doesn't really ring true. And that happens to everybody. How do I get, how do I get back? Okay, well, what he made were some rules. Noticing in his own thinking how he could maneuver this barrage of situation of being alive and a human. So step one is awareness. There's a recognition that I'm not at peace. I'm not grateful. I'm not feeling one with God. But I must be present to notice that I'm not. I'm not. Once I've noticed, and I sincerely want to have thoughts that go toward God, not away, then I seek understanding. When did this start? What happened? What triggered this inside? I was feeling pretty good this before. This morning, I was lovely. What's wrong? So I then explore my own recent experiences and feelings like I was feeling fine. And now, no, oof, don't call. I'm not going anywhere. You are the only one that can do this. You are the only one that can go back. Just like when you lost the keys, you have to go back. What, what precipitated this little mess I'm in? If you are truly committed to wanting to lean toward God instead of leaning away, then the wheels start turning. The third step is to take action. Am I going to accept or reject? this little moment I'm in. I address the situation with authenticity and then I decide on action. Am I going to accept or reject this frame of mind? If I accept this frame of mind, well, then I can go into a pity party. I can go into negative self-talk. I could just go in a group so all people can talk about my problem together. Or I could ruminate, go way down the rabbit hole. 
I could, I could write a story about it. Bless you. Or do I move into acceptance of the God within? Here I might use prayer, affirmations, meditation, inspired readings, or I might have a trusted spiritual guide or counselor. At the end of my two and a half weeks of what I was doing, I, I was going to communion every morning. I was going to reconciliation, which used to be called confessions every morning. My dear friend Kevin or Kendall said, what did you do that was so bad? <laughs> and then I recognized that, no, for me now, reconciliation means I'm not going behind some screen and talking to some guy. I'm sitting there with this person who is a great spiritual guy and saying, this is what's going on. And then I started realizing there were little nicks and crannies in this mess of me that <laughs> were stopping me from being clear and good and what I hope I can be on this earth. So then I started looking at those darn 10 commandments. And then I started getting what it was about. Up to this, I would just kind of go in there and talk to him. And then one day he went, you know, there's a, there's a line of people out there. <laughs> Maybe we should set a little appointment up, Susan. Maybe this isn't, I go, oh yeah, good call. Okay. So then I came back after I remembered what the heck the whole thing was about. I've been receiving communion for years. I don't go to Brecon. I just love communion. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So then I go back. I go, oh, I get it. Examination of consciousness, something, conscience. I, I found one. I'm coveting my neighbor's husband's. He goes, well, now that's something. I go, yeah, that's on the list. And he goes, well, of course you are because you're a single woman and you must know wonderful people and wonderful couples. And it's lovely and good, excuse me. It's lovely and good to see people married and who have a relationship. Of course you'd want that. Oh, okay, wasn't so bad. Okay, so I did whatever I was supposed to do. And then I was like, oh, well, maybe I should look at some of these. Okay, then how about, oh, I'm still swearing. Okay, I believe I put God and then I put some other word there and it's not really the nice word. So I go, hey, I found another one. I'm using God's name in vain. I said, These things are great. This is a good list, you know? And as you can tell, you know, I take things so smack, isn't it funny? But they were clearing me up. They were clearing me up. Every day I was like, whoa. Then I was like, well, I, I'm coveting my neighbor's um, 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 possessions. I want a house like that. I want to, uh, that's a nice, I want those things. He goes, well, that's natural too, because we're just on a planet and everybody has things. So of course, okay, cool. All right, so then I came back to Kenosha or wherever I live, Milwaukee, and uh, anchored with my friends here in that journey group. And I realized I might've met a spiritual leader but when I met other people from his church, not so like-minded people as we are. For instance, I talked to one lady and I said, oh my God, I heard there's tornadoes and so-and-so. I thought they were in California. She says, well, they deserve it. Excuse me? She said, well, Hollywood, right? Okay. Then I saw another lady that I'd seen at morning mass in the restaurant. Hi. Uh, hi, how are you doing? Laura? She goes, well, I know we say that our father together, but that scares me to boots. I went, what? She goes, there's a part in there that says thy will be done. What if God wants me to do something? What if God wants? I was like, ouch. I said, my God uh, loves me, has my back, really happy. Wouldn't doubt that God's will is better than mine. God's will is not the booby prize. It's the good stuff. So then I came back to my people in journey group. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> you are still my people. <laughs> but when you meet a spiritual director or a spiritually guided counselor, honor them for who they are and get what you can. So I came back here. And then one morning I woke up. It was that terrible morning of the storm. I think it was Thursday, maybe. But I got up at six o'clock and I went, holy moly, I found a good one. So I get in my car, I drive through that storm. It was so bad. I was off the side of the road. Okay, fine. 
get there, the last person in that line of his was just leaving the confessional. He did confessions from or reconciliation, whatever you want to say, from 7.30 to 7.50. Well, that was pretty much 7.50 because then he had eight o'clock mass. So last lady comes out. I went, oh, man, I found a big one. And he's like, oh, Susan, you're back. Yes. Okay. So I realized I have not been honoring my mother. And he goes, that is a big one. That is a big one. What do you mean? And I said, well, I always tell these stories about how my mother, because my mother was had a, a mental illness, I learned to be really kind and understanding, very patient with anybody, no matter where they are on the spectrum, any spectrum. But I also have these pity party days where they, I, well, if it wasn't for my mother, well, I don't want to be like my mother. And if it wasn't for my mother, and I use her as an excuse for any behavior that I don't like in me or I want an excuse for. Okay. So that was just this past week. And I swear, you add that with the Holy Week motif and the energetics that are on the planet right now of wanting healing, of knowing we're in a big mess. Crucifixion is everywhere you look on TV. It's everywhere you look in the news. But we each have within us to and make it through. So that's good. And that's God. And that's a personal resurrection. So now to the words of my talk. Oh, the Ginny Stuvie primer, which I always try to go by. Humor. My Easter joke. All right. So the farmer <laughs> is going into the chicken farm. And he goes into the barn and there are nests everywhere and the chickens have laid so many eggs and he knows the kids are going to come take the eggs out anytime. But he remembers it's Easter. I got it. I'm going to color all the eggs and then I'm going to put them back in the nest. And when the children find them, it's going to be Easter. Oh, so cool. Okay. He did it. What he did not see coming was the rooster. Now, what do you think the rooster did when he got in that barn and he saw all of those colored eggs? Beat the heck out of the peacock. <laughs> so instead of beginning with a joke, I'm going to tell you one other image that came to me over the times of getting ready to speak before you, because I honor any time anybody's bold enough to take 10 or 15 minutes of your time. I hope you pay attention. This image came to me. We fight a lot between being so empowered, a daughter of God on this earth. I can do anything Jesus did. And every day in every way, I'm getting better, better, and better. And there's one presence and one power, and that is me, and I'm in it. And we spend a lot of pretty strong time. Where does humility come into all that? Where does modesty of spirit come into all that? When, when am I humble? So, the image came to me that I am a feather on a mighty wing. I'm a feather on a mighty wing. Now that wing is going somewhere. That wing is connected to a bird that knows where it's going. Maybe it's God. Maybe it's the Holy Spirit. Maybe it's a mighty eagle. But the wing is the strength that pushes that bird to where it needs to go. And if I'm just one feather, 
And we're all just one feather on a mighty wing. We can count on so much. I don't have to propel the bird. I don't have to change the wind. I don't have to always know the direction in my life. I don't even have to always remember who I am. But if I am a humble feather, not in the wind, not laying on the beach, but on a mighty wing, I think it's going to be okay. Happy Easter. And it's time for meditation. Is it? Okay. As many of us are, I'm a big fan of Jesus calling. So as you close your eyes, if you like, quiet down a bit. Take the breaths you know will calm you down. Get to where you go to. See yourself as that feather on a mighty wing. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to know your sense of direction. In Jesus calling, it says today, you are mine for all time. Nothing can separate you from my love. Since I have invested my very life in you, be well assured that I will also take care of you. When your mind goes into neutral and your thoughts flow freely, you tend to feel anxious and alone. Your focus becomes problem solving. To get your mind back into gear, just turn toward me. Bringing yourself and your problems into my presence. Many problems vanish instantly in the light of my love. Because you realize you are never alone. Other problems may remain, but they become secondary to knowing me. and rejoicing in the relationship I so freely offer you. Each moment you can choose to practice my presence or to practice the presence of problems.
you are a humble feather on a mighty wing. And we are all good. And so it is. Okay, if you would take your gifts, tithes, offerings in your hands as we join in our offering prayer. There is no lack or limitation. Freely I give and freely I receive from God's abundance. I am blessed as I give and unity is blessed in receiving. So we have some more music from Sherry. the 6th are, are celebrating the sake. Um, I actually didn't know that, but um, this is considered the most powerful mantra or prayer of the 6th, and the first time I heard it, I didn't know what it meant, um, but it moved me, and um, so I'm going to give you the translation just so you have some understanding. Um, it's not to be sung or prayed unless the intention is really there. Um, so translation is one creator, truth in his name, doer of everything, fearless, revealessness, undying wisdom, self-illuminated, the guru's gift, meditate, true in the beginning, true thought of all the ages, true ever now, oh thank you, it's forever true.
If you would all reach your hands and your hearts out to our blessings. Thank you, God, for gathering us together and giving us this green energy that we can share with uh, the community, keep our spiritual community going and as we reach out in the community. Thank you for all those who have given today and uh, continue to prosper because of that giving and existing here. So it is. Amen. Oh, hey, uh, announcements time. We're going to rush right through these because we want to go celebrate, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, next week's Reverend Patty on what is faith. Uh, and uh, I forgot who our musician is, but that's okay. We'll find that out next week too, right? Um, what was that? I think you're right. It's Julian Doug. I did see it earlier. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, the book study continues, Return to Love, Marianne Williams on Thursday mornings at 930, virtually or here, come join us. Uh, Unity Prayer Service right after that at 11 o'clock, in person or virtually. Um, and again, I'll be over praying over in the, uh, by the prayer box for anyone who wants it after the service. Uh, we have our discussion groups going on, Course in Miracles. Are we having Course in Miracles today, Joanne? Okay. So if somebody wants to stay for Course in Miracles, uh, you're welcome to do that. Joanne's here for that every Sunday, 11, about 11.45. We have a Life Journey groups, the second and fourth Mondays. Again, uh, I think those are all in person, as I recall, at about 6.30 here. So uh, if you want to be a part of that, you're welcome. You don't have to be there every week. Come join us. Our wonderful Unity website, uh, Come look at that. I haven't looked at it in a while until this last week. Yeah, they said it was redesigned. I'm like, oh yeah. I keep saying go in there and I go in and click on something, but I really took a look, a look at it this weekend and there's some awesome, awesome. Well, there's always been awesome stuff, but it's just, it's nice and clean and um, it's something to check out folks. What was that? It's been easy to maneuver. Exactly. So we're cool on that. Volunteers. Yep. We got everything here. Speaking, watering plants. Look at these beautiful flowers that just appeared this morning. Uh, somebody uh, had to have those happen. Um, whatever it is, reach out to Diane. She's not here today. Send her an email uh, and come join us to whatever you want to do. Uh, help out. Spring fundraiser. I, we will be part of the community rummage sale here. Uh, gather up your books, your things you want to donate. You know, you don't have to stand in your own garage and your own driveway that way. Come bring them here and uh, we'll, uh, they'll participate in that. There'll be more with that later. So of course we need volunteers. Talk to Diane, talk to any of the board members, uh, whatever you'd like to do on that. Um, and I'm sorry, I public talk with Monk and Zen Master, say it. Sure, Di. Wang, thank you. Uh huh. You can tell what where I don't study very often. Uh, Friday the twenty second, twenty first. Excuse me, the twenty first, uh, from seven thirty to eight thirty. It is here, free, and donations are accepted. Uh, thank you. There are flyers by the bulletin board. It'll appear in our e blast. If you're not part of that, make sure you please send an email to UCIM at no, excuse me. Who do we send it to? It's on the slide. Keep going. There you go. Send it. Send it. Send an email to the church, um, or make the phone call and uh, get on our mailing list as well. Um, Delma Rampache, um also is doing a talk uh, April fourteenth, fifteenth, and sixteenth. Again, that you are welcome to be part of. Look for the information. Online only. Thank you. Uh, and then, of course, we have our annual potluck and bake sale and annual meeting and all that fun stuff. Anybody that's new, we welcome you today. Thank you for joining us. If you'd like to be part and get a, a part of a membership meeting, talk to I want board members to raise their hands, please talk to some of them. Uh, if you want information on how to be a member and be a part, everybody got uh, that is a member got an e uh, mailing this week. Uh, bring that in. We do have to re-enroll every year. Um, and again, you know, if you need other information, talk to the board members. The picture contest is in process. See the bulletin board? Try and pick out who's who out there. 
uh, $25 gift certificate gift card to Walmart. And if you got any questions other than who those people are, see Susan. Because <laughs> she won't answer that. Um, games after service on the 23rd. Uh, come have some friendly games again. See who can, I don't know, Pictionary. We've had a couple times. Just enjoy it. Uh, and just have some fun with everybody. And now we have some more peace to extend to the world. Feel free to stand up, join the circle, sit where you are, whatever you'd like to do, whatever's comfortable for you, um, and join us in the peace song, please. Let's see. We might get all the way around. Let's do the middle. Was here yesterday for an service. It's one of those for me right now. Welcome. I don't like to get good. So if somebody's out there, feel free to join us. Come sit around. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Bring oh, yeah, thing. Great. So I can just leave that one. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I think that's back. Yeah, they're doing that. Oh, I'm giving us something else. Yes. Um, yeah. I don't need any styles. I don't want them to be here. They're present. That felt so good. Yeah, because that's all we need. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, dear. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. We can set one of them. Something nice for the kind of smile to see when I've got the hand Mm hmm. Good job. Yeah. Happy Easter. Oh, thanks, Sid. Maybe they put a little stuff on it. Right. Well, thank you so much for those flowers. You're welcome. They they really did uh, brighten things up a bit. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Kevin, do you know how this is? Uh, is that one isn't working properly. Uh, um, Pitch, okay. Pitch, no. Yeah, ask Pitch because 